Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. This is not a game. This is very serious business. And I think at the end, it will be proven to the American people that this is serious business. And we need to get on with it. And we need to have the other side to stop playing games. Ms. O'Connor, in a column published in the Wall Street Journal, you stated that the typical timidity of IRS criminal tax la lawyers in recommending prosecution is, quote, common knowledge in the tax enforcement community, end quote. Can you explain where this timidity comes from? I don't know this source of it. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, but it is common knowledge in the tax enforcement community. The tax division is required to authorize any criminal tax charges that are going to be brought. In order to inform itself, uh, the, well, the special agent report uh, is provided to the tax division. Before it gets to the tax division, IRS criminal criminal tax attorneys review it. They, they are, uh, because, I'm sorry, having trouble answering this, but. Uh, let, because, me give, let me give you some more guidance. Okay. So I, before I bringing can. charges, IRS criminal lawyers, as you're alluding to, provide advisory views in a special agent report. Is that correct? Right. And they, okay. are advise, they are advisory only. And the IRS, as any prosecutor is, is very determined to have a very high conviction rate. So they okay. want to be very, very careful that if they bring a case, they will win it. All right. So can you describe a typical special agent report and the special agent report specific to Hunter Biden's case. Certainly. The whistleblowers have testified that nearly 1,000 pages were provided in the special agent report to the tax division. That special agent report consisted not only of a discussion of what they had discovered, but also every bit of evidence that they found that supported each element of each crime for each year for which they were recommending charges. Okay, let me, let me follow up again, please. More than a year after DOJ's tax division received this report, the division created a 99-page memorandum supporting the recommended charges. Is that correct? I might be wrong about how long it took the tax division. I've seen other information suggesting it was a much shorter period of time. But, the, but they did do that. I understand that the tax division did produce a 99-page memo authorizing all the charges the special agents had recommended. Thank you. So, Ms. O'Connor, you said DOJ's tax division recommended six felonies and five misdemeanors. Is that correct? That's correct. Hunter Biden was only initially charged with two counts of willful failure to pay federal income taxes as part of the plea deal. Is that correct? Right, for just two years. Okay. And, and these are misdemeanors? Right. Okay. But the maximum penalty for these charges is a fine of $25,000, as well as up to one year in federal prison. Is that correct? Or both. Or both. Yet Hunter Biden owed more than $100,000 in both 2017 and 2018. Correct? That's what the criminal information alleged. I think that's a ballpark figure. Okay. Based on the answers you just provided, it's extremely difficult to believe that an individual who is not the son of the sitting U.S. president would be treated this way. We're told the Department of Justice treats all citizens equally under the law. But based on the evidence this committee has presented, that is not what, is ha what happened in Delaware. Based on your experience, would you agree that that's not what happened in Delaware? Exactly. And it was particularly galling because just in the next store, uh, the next state in New Jersey, a mechanic was being sentenced to two years for having uh, not paid like $100,000 in taxes. So in this case, there was not equal justice under the law being proposed. Absolutely not. It was not. To totally unequal justice. That is not what this country stands for. We want everybody being treated the same under the law, and my colleagues should feel the same way. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Good lady yields back. Before I recognize Ms. Ocasio-Cortez, I ask unanimous consent to enter into the record a letter from Lev Parnas, who 
uh, Mr. Raskin continues to refer to, uh, it's actually a press release from the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of New York. It's, it's uh, Lev Parnas sentenced to 20 months in prison for campaign finance, wire fraud, and false statement offenses. Yeah, he worked with Rudy Giuliani. Without objection, so ordered. 